<laughs> all right, let's all. I, I, I'm, I, I don't know where I'm starting. I'm just kind of, I'm going to kind of bounce around here. I want to look at, and we're going in chapter 2, but of Galatians. But I want to look at um, a couple of verses in chapter 1. It says, in verse 16, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Didn't go to the apostles. Didn't go to none of the deacons. He didn't go to the university in Jerusalem to get, to get what he had. Neither went I up to Jerusalem. That clarified it, didn't it? To them which were apostles before me. But I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But other of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. Now the thing which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Let's go to verse chapter 2. Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated uh, unto them the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, least by any means I should run or had run in vain. Now, I want to say this before I go to work prayer. Paul's telling them, I'm preaching something you're not preaching. The message I got is not the message you're preaching. So that's one of the problems in the, in, the, in the New Testament that a lot of people have. Is there was two things going on. There was a Jewish thing and then there was a Gentile thing. And that's where all the confusion is. So I'm going to kind of look, kind of delve into that confusion today. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity you've given us. Thank you, Father, for being the, the great God you are. Thank you, Father, for this book. Thank you, Father, for the, uh, the preachers that are still running up and down this uh, country uh, preaching this book. Uh, they're not going to very big churches. They're going to just little, little uh, uh, enclaves of, uh, in communities where maybe 15, 20, 30 uh, uh, people, dear Lord, in the church uh, still holding to the old book. Thank you, Father, for them. Thank you, Father, for, for those, dear Lord, sticking by uh, the book. I pray that you'll just watch over us and, and uh, help us, dear Lord. Help me, dear Lord, with my voice tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. In the first 10 verses, chapter 2, Paul lays out the problem. After Paul converses, he tells us, and in verse 17 of chapter 1, what he was preaching, he didn't get it from the University of Jerusalem. He didn't set it the, 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 uh, at the feet of uh, Professor Peter or Professor James or even Professor John. He attended the world's most unusual university, the University of Arabia. He sat at the feet of one of the greatest teachers in the universe. He, he sat at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ for three years. He reported to the apostles at Jerusalem what had been revealed to him in verses 19 and verse 20. But others of, of the apostles saw I none save James, the, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God... I lie not. Now in chapter 2, <coughs> 14 years after, he said 14 years after I went up to Jerusalem with Barnabas and to Titus with me also. He goes up there, uh, and this is probably around Acts chapter 11 verse 30. He goes to Jerusalem and meets with them privately. In verse uh, 2 it says, I went up by revelation and communicated to the uh, them that uh, that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles but privately he didn't get out there and have a big convention and tell them what he, what he learned he just he went to the he went to the main dudes and he said now this is what the Lord has taught, told me to preach and they discussed the relationship of the law and grace there in verse 3 but, but neither Titus who was with me being a Greek 
was compelled to be circumcised. Now, if you go over here to chapter 5, I believe it's chapter 5, I got it marked, in verse 6, the key verse of uh, Galatians is this. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith with uh, which worketh by, by love. Now, that verse is a catch-all verse. You can put, you can put, for in Christ Jesus, neither praying through availeth anything, nor unpraying through availeth anything, but faith which worketh. You can put that, you can put church membership in there. You can put good works in there. You can put the law in there. You can put, you can put whatever you want. And, and you can put that there and, and, and it's settled right there. It's faith. Now, there must have been a great con uh, contention in that meeting. Because you look here in verse 4. And because of false brethren, unawares, brought in, who came in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. That's a key word there in the book of Galatians. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might con continue with me. He didn't, give them, he didn't give them one step. He didn't back up one inch. Verse 7, I, and, but counterwise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed to me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostle of the circumcision, the same was mighty in, in me toward the gospel. And when James and Caiaphas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me uh, and Barnabas the right hand of the fellowship, and we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Now I want to say this. They draw the lines. We're, this is my turf. This is your turf. You cross into my turf, there's going to be trouble. Amen? It, it, I mean, they're going to be, they're going to be, they're going to be, they're going to be a riot. I heard a story. I heard a story uh, years ago. And I, you all might be, you might, you might know more about him than, than I know. Because I'm not a, I'm not a sports nut. I don't, tonight, I don't care who wins. Uh, I got, I got my, prefer, my read preference because one's, one quarterback I just can't stand. He just, he just, but the other one, he's got that goofy girl. Six foot two, what's her name? Swift. Uh, he, he, you know, they, they're they're making a big deal out of her. So I really don't care. I heard there's going to be a terrorist attack there. I don't know. <laughs> it might be, <laughs> especially as goofy this country's gotten. But in, in baseball, the, the, one of the saddest episodes in the the history of baseball, uh, it, it happened in about 1920 at the height of Baseball. I mean, baseball was the sport. Like today, football is the sport. You look at baseball today, and it, it's it's sparsely, you know, empty seats everywhere. Back in 1920s, they were filled to capacity. It was a big deal. But one of the ball, the greatest ball players, there was a guy by the name of Shoeless Joe Jackson. You know, there, Julius Joe Jackson, he started working at a cotton mill at the age of six. He had no education, could not read, could not even sign his name. They say if, if, if you get an autograph by Joe Jackson, it was his wife's uh, uh, sign his name. He was just illiterate. you got to remember that. Babe Ruth said about Joe Jackson, I learned how to swing a bat. Because of Joe Jackson. Uh, Ty Cobb said he was the greatest natural ball player he had ever seen. 
He had a, he had a black bat. He would take tobacco juice and rub it in there and rub that into that, that bat. And, and, and when he'd, he'd carry, carry that black bat, bat, they called it Black Betsy. And he said whenever they saw, the other team saw Black Betsy go out on the field, they knew they had lost. His rookie year, he had, he, he had a 408 batting average, his rookie year. His 12-year average was 365. He is picked in 1999 as the 35th greatest baseball player ever play the game. In the World Series against Cincinnati Reds, he batted a 375. Every ball that was hit to him, every ball that was hit to him, he filled it. He made, he made no mistakes in the, the ball game. Before the World Series started, he heard in, that there are some players, there are about seven players, that were uh, going to um, uh, throw the game, throw the series. And they were going to get paid a lot of money. They offered Joe Jackson uh, uh, $5,000. $5,000 is $85,000 in our money. So it's a lot of money. And uh, Joe Jackson, uh, he tried to get off. He, tr he went to the coach. And he says, I don't want to play. Something's going on. This is, it, it's, it's, it's going to be bad. And they said, you can't. You're under contract. You've got to play. So he played. Now, they lost to Cincinnati Reds, I think, in the eighth game. They had nine games. You had nine games there. But he, they, they lost in the eighth, the, the eighth game. And... Um, um, at, the, at the end of the game, one of the ball players handing $5,000. Well, word got out. Word got out. The eight players had took money from the, bed, uh, the bookies to throw the game, the World Series. The eight had gone to court that day. Now, I think it's 1920. He went to the court that day and they was indicted. Joe Jackson didn't know how to read and they wrote out his confession. And they told him to sign it. He signed it. That was the end of him. But as Joe Jackson was walking out, as he was walking out of the courtroom, a six-year-old boy ran up to him, grabbed his sleeve and said, Joe, say it's not so. And that's what I've called this sermon. Say it's not so. You say, why in the world? Well, let's look at verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circum uh, circumcision. And the other Jews dis disassembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas, can you believe it, Barnabas, also was carried away with their dissimulation. I want to say, every time I read this passage, say it ain't so, Joe. Say it ain't so. I mean, Peter, come on. Give us a break. I believe this is one of the saddest episodes of the Christian church. You can go back 2,000 years. This is one of the most tragic incidents that happened in the church. It is the, an event that has reverberated down through the centuries. It, it affects us even today. When I really read Galatians chapter 2, I want to cry. Say it's not so, Joe! Say it's not so. What seems to have, what seems to have happened, someone crossed the street into someone's territory in verses 11 and 12. 
And guess who heard about it? The leader of the other gang. The Apostle Paul. I want to look at Peter's conduct. I'm tired of looking at Peter's conduct. Amen. Because when Peter can blow it, he can really blow it. Notice the city in the conduct. And it's important. Antioch. Wasn't Jerusalem. It's Antioch they were first called Jew, uh, uh, Christians. Not Jerusalem. True, Peter opened the door to the Gentiles in Acts chapter 10. Beyond opening the door of the church to the Gentiles, he had little interest in the, in the Gentiles. That task was given to Paul, and he knew that. We need to see how attractive Judaism was to the Gentiles. The Gentiles were sick and tired of the, of the heathenism, the, the pagan religions of their day. They were sick of the godless heathenism. There were sacrifices, human sacrifices going on in those temples. And there was, there, they were weary of the theological moral depravity. There, the, the temples were nothing but, uh, but, but uh, brothels. I won't say that word right. They're nothing but brothels. They looked longingly on the lofty religious uh, ideas of the Jews or ideals of the Jews. They were, there were, but there were some problems with the Jews in the eyes of a Gentile. First problem was their dietary laws. Now, if my wife, if I told my wife, tomorrow we're, we're going to another religion and you can't eat bacon anymore, we got a rift in our family. <laughs> we're, I, I am done in that family. She's going to kick me out. She's going to say, bye-bye, I'm not giving up my bacon. Amen. And that's the way those Gentiles were. We're not giving up our bacon. We're not giving up our catfish. We're not giving up our lobster or our pulled pork or our pork chops. You know, I went, <coughs> I went to a Chinese restaurant here, big old smorgasbord. And I'm telling you, there are some disgusting things us Gentiles eat. I'm telling you, there are some disgusting things. I, I went in there and I went, I, I don't know how many, y'all been there? You ever, you ever eat down there? The Chinese place down there across from the mall? The smorgasbord? Yeah, the big buffet. Well, I went in that buffet here a couple weeks ago, and I, I got, went in there and I said, oh man, I'm going to try some, uh, some, some squid. I put some squid on my table, and I said, oh man, there's some, there's some, there's some uh, uh, lobster uh, legs. And I, I tried that, I, I put some lobster legs on there, and then there were some red crawfish. I went back, and I put, I put that one, uh, the, the squid in my mouth there. It's just chewy. Didn't taste like anything, just chewy. I said, why in the world? <laughs> The next thing I, I tried, I tried the lobster. I broke the lobster leg up, and I, oh, oh, that's terrible. And then I got the red fish, or the craw, red crawfish, and I broke it open, and I seen the intestines. You know what's inside the intestines? I'm not putting that in my mouth. Goodness sakes. There are some things Gentiles eat just disgusting. They didn't like their self-righteousness. They, 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 they were, they, they, they didn't like their arrogance. There were some things about the Jews they didn't, they didn't like their, they didn't like their hypocrisy. They say one thing and do another. They didn't like their social intercourse. I mean, if you're not a Jew, you're a dog. You're a Gentile. And they didn't like their endless rules. Goodness sakes. One time, one time an Indian, he was from Oklahoma and he was going to, he was going to a, he was a pastor and he's going to a, uh, some place out west to a, a big uh, pastor's conference. And, and, the, and the theme of the pastor's conference was law and grace. 
And, uh, and the one speaker would get up and they would talk about the, the difference between law and grace. And, and, and another pastor would get up and talk about it. And they, and they, they, they started taking questions from the audience. And, and, uh, and the Indian, he, he, he goes and he said, well, I'll tell you what. He said, when I got on that train, they had a sign that said, no spitting. <laughs> and people were just spitting all over the place. You know, talking about tobacco. Spitting everywhere. He said, I come here. There's no signs. Nobody's spitting. <laughs> and he said, that's the a, that's a dr difference between law and grace. I mean, law says nothing. You go over here and you got grace. He said, the difference. Amen. When Paul offered uh, the, them salvation by grace, man, they jumped at it. He says, he says over there in, uh, look at chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 4, and that because of false bre uh, brethren, unawares, brought in, who came in privately to spy out our liberty. Look over here with me in chapter 5, verse 1. Chapter 5, verse 1. It says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. If you look at in chapter 4, verse 31. So then, brethren, we are not children of bondwoman, but of the free. I mean, the Gentiles, they wanted to be free. They didn't want to go from one bondage to another bondage. This church was thriving. This church was thriving. It caught the eye of the Jacobites, as the old times would call them, the Judaizers. Then I want you to notice the, con the cause of the conduct. Look in verse 11. Verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. He must have caused great joy to have Peter at Antioch. Can you imagine? I mean, Peter's going to be in our midst. He's going to be in our midst. I mean, he's the vicar of Christ, ain't he? Amen? He's, a, he's an apostle, official apostle. I mean, I remember one time back about 1973-74. We had a little church there in Destin, Florida. That we was meeting in a community center. There was Okaloosa Island Bridge. You come right across the bridge and you was right there. And then you look over this way. You see the, the pass uh, that goes out to the, the fishing boats would go out. And I'd sit there Sunday morning and I'd watch those, you know, those boats going in and out. Just, I was in heaven. I mean, this was the greatest thing I ever. And, but top it off, one Sunday we got Dr. Ruckman. And Dr. Ruttman came, and I can still remember, this is almost 50 years ago. I can remember the sermon he preached about Joshua, old soldiers never die. And I'm telling you, when he finished with that sermon, I stood up and gave him the salute. It was that good. It was the best sermon I ever heard. Some of the best illustrations I ever heard. I can still see those horses standing up on the hills, ready, at when the, the, those retired horses standing up on a hill at, when the lightning was thundering and they were ready for the charge. Man, I was ready. <laughs> but what, think about it, what a thrill it was to have Peter in their midst. I mean, people were thrilled. I mean, they flocked to the meeting. They were fascinated by Peter's shadow. Did you hear about that thing? About his shadow? People got healed of his shadow. Man, they were just thrilled. I mean, the building was full. People outside the building. Uh, he was preaching in the morning on, the, on Calvary. And in the afternoon, he's going to give his, his, uh, his, uh, his testimony. And then we're going to have dinner on the grounds. Then I want you to notice the inconsistency, inconsistency of Peter. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. I want to look at the inconsistency of Peter. Peter acted one way around one group. He acted another way around another group. 
Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The Bible says that uh, 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 it says they speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with, with a double heart do they speak. I mean, here the fundamentalists come in where the Bible believers were. You know what? You know what? Every time I read my Bible and I get over there in the book of Genesis, and I, 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 there's some verses I just ponder. I stop. And Genesis 46, verse 34, I stop. For every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. Listen. To the fundamentalists, we are an abomination. I got a, I got a guy over there, uh, over there in West Portsmouth. Got talked to him one day, and I asked him. I knew he went to a local church. I asked him. I said, "I said, how's that church doing?" And I know the I know the the pastor in that church. And he said, "I quit going to that church." And I said, "Why'd you quit going to that church?" He said, "He said, he said, they're they're practicing onlyism in that church." And I said, "Onlyism? What are you talking about?" He said, "King James onlyism. I'm going to church up there where they." They preach out the, the new American standard version. And you know what? That was the last time I talked to him. He avoids me now. I, you know what I told him? I said, well, good for him. I was tickled. Praise God. I said, good for him taking a good stand. Amen? Goodness sakes. Now I want you to notice the dishonor in the in inconsistency. Peter had been shown a great revelation over there in, in Acts chapter 10. Uh, you remember the sheep come down and all unclean uh, critters come out on that, un, un, uh, on that sheet. And, and the Lord said, kill and eat, Peter. And Peter refused three times. Look here, look here with me in Acts chapter uh, 10. Acts chapter 10. In Acts chapter 10, verse... Uh, verse 28 in Acts chapter 10 verse 28 and he said unto them ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one 